With Trump doing so well in the polls, there's been a lot of talk about Americans wanting to move here to Canada, where Prime Minister is a weed-endorsing quantum physics explaining all-around good-looking dude with a gorgeous full head of hair and not a toupee. You can't really blame them. But some people want to get further away from Trump than the 49th parallel north. Some people want to go to space. This concept obviously dates back well before Donald Trump started trying to force old women out of their homes, but that intro was way more fun. Let's talk space colonization, specifically orbital space settlements. Get out of here, planets. Many argue that the need for orbital space settlements is so that humanity has a backup in case this or this happens. The first probably leading to the second. There is also the resource argument. Space is big and filled with things, and we can mine those things and bring them back to Earth. But the real reason people are interested, or at least my reason for being interested, is that it's just cool. The big advantage that orbital space colonies would have over, say, moon, planet, or asteroid-based ones are their inherent mobility. The first colonies would likely be built in low Earth orbit, which would give them relatively easy access to Earth for transferring resources, equipment, and to visit relatives. Trips are estimated to take only a few hours. Another big one is energy. In high enough orbit, there would be no night, meaning solar panels can collect delicious sun juice all day long. These settlements would likely have to be huge, so that when you leave your space home, it feels like you're going outside and not living out your life in a depressing series of space tubes. The great thing about space settlements is you can build them in zero gravity, allowing for massive, oddly shaped structures that would likely collapse in upon themselves if built on Earth. The first orbital space colonies would likely orbit Earth and be relatively close, but down the line, they'd be able to go much farther. Okay, so we know why we might want space colonies, but why haven't they happened yet? Well, it's not for lack of trying. Probably the first mention of a manned space station is The Brick Moon, a short story by Edward Everett Hale published in the Atlantic Monthly in 1869. The story describes a Death Star resembling, 200 foot in diameter, brick fabricated space station, meant to function as a navigational aid, but accidentally launched with people aboard. 34 years later, in 1903, in Russia, school teacher and now grandfather of all things space, Konstantin Tchaikovsky, wrote Beyond the Planet Earth a fictional piece about an orbiting, human-populated space station which would be used for the colonization of our solar system. Those were fiction, so let's fast forward to 1929 for a non-fiction space station proposal that would ultimately come to life in the fictional interstellar Babylon 5 and Deep Space Nine. This is the Bernal Sphere, a space habitat proposed in 1929 by J.D. Bernal in his book The World, the Flesh, and the Devil. What he described was a massive spherical generational space station. This means that the first generation of crew would raise the second, who'd raise the third, and so on. Until they reached their destination, or whatever. The station was to support around 10,000 people, living remarkably suburban lives, complete with bicycles, lawns, and picket fences. Nothing would really come of the Bernal Sphere until the 1970s, when interest in space colonization would hit an all-time high. 30 years after the Bernal Sphere was hypothesized, Collier's Magazine would publish a series of articles from 1952 to 1954 that would uncannily predict the future of space exploration. They predicted everything from the moon landing to the Hubble Space Telescope to the construction of the International Space Station. One idea from the magazine that never made it to tangible fruition was the idea of a donut or ring-shaped space station. The idea was proposed by Werner von Braun in the March 22, 1952 issue titled Man Will Conquer Space Soon. The idea was to build a ring-shaped space station, which would orbit the Earth roughly a thousand miles up, take ten years to build, and cost roughly the price of the atom bomb. Braun and honestly the entire magazine were hopelessly optimistic, and they estimated that the project would be completed within the next 10 to 15 years, meaning that by 1970, at the very latest, we'd be living in space. He believed that once the station was built, piece by piece, the moon would only be a step away. This obviously never happened, but 17 years later, the world's first person would step foot on the moon. Or on a soundstage, depending on whether or not you wear a tinfoil hat. Braun was ahead of his time, but by the 1970s, the scientific community would catch up and get really into the idea of space colonization. In the summer of 1975, NASA held a series of studies at Stanford University, with the intent of coming up with different designs for possible space colonies. The first of these, and arguably the most successful, was the Stanford Taurus, a design which found its roots in Braun's space donut. By design, it was a torus or donut shape, hence the name. It was a mile in diameter, and it could theoretically support 10,000 people. The ring would rotate once per minute, providing Earth normal gravity on the inside of the station. It would be lit using natural sunlight reflected on a series of mirrors, and it would also attempt to replicate suburban lifestyle. That's a big theme with these space colonies. No matter how far from Earth we plan to live, it always has to resemble 1950s suburbia. 
But the world wasn't done with the Bernal Sphere quite yet, and in 1976, Gerard O'Neill would adapt the idea with Island One, which would also rotate to provide Earth normal gravity, would contain a massive artificial greenhouse for agriculture production, would also make use of mirrors for sunlight, and could also house 10,000 people. You might think that 10,000 people is the magic number for these orbital space colonies. But by the time O'Neill created his third iteration of the Bernal Sphere, creatively titled the O'Neill Cylinder, he theorized that it could support several million individuals permanently. The O'Neill Cylinder was the most advanced and ambitious one yet. It featured two rotating cylinders as to cancel out any gyroscopic effects that make it difficult to keep its mirrors aligned with the sun. It would be 20 miles long and four miles in diameter. And as with all these cylindrical designs, if you look up, you'd see people living seemingly upside down. See what I mean? So cool. This cylindrical design, whose origin was the Bernal Sphere, would go on to inspire more proposed space stations, like the Lewis One, the McKendry Cylinder, the Bishop Ring, and the recently proposed Kalpana One in 2007, which is much smaller than the rest. Not only that, but these proposals have made their way into television, film, and video games, inspiring future generations of space nerds with titles like Babylon 5, Deep Space Nine, Interstellar, and sort of Mass Effect. Unfortunately, none of these projects have ever come to light. The technology has never been right, the cost has been too high, and also, it's kind of illegal. In 1967, the Outer Space Treaty was signed by America, the Soviets, and the UK, and now 101 other countries. And it designates that it is illegal for countries to appropriate the moon and other celestial bodies. Though, it doesn't specify if individuals are allowed to appropriate the moon or other celestial bodies, which has led to an entrepreneurial few selling moon land to dummies. NASA is currently working on a few projects that are somewhat stepping stones to space colonies, but unfortunately, none of them are actually space colonies. So in the meantime, I guess we can get excited about Mars One. Oh. Or Newt Gingrich's moon base. Oh. Or Mass Effect 4, I guess? All right. What do you guys think? Will orbital space stations ever happen within our lifetime? And would you want to live in one? Or are you firmly on team moon base? Let me know in the comments. And if you want me to make more videos, you can support me on Patreon, which would be much appreciated. Anyways, if you haven't already, be sure to click right on this face to subscribe, or at least think about it. Whew. La 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 la